Greetings boys and girls, Zujin here. This is my second take of recording this video. Today I'm going to try and show you how I try and find some nice biomes. That was my challenge of my son <laughs> playing around. So, picture the scene. You want to create a new world. You want to start from scratch. You start playing it for hours and hours. And after a while you realise there's no jungle. <laughs> You've travelled for 10,000 blocks in every direction and you still can't find that jungle biome. Well, this has happened to me more than a few times. I've wasted, not wasted, I've spent many an hour in a new world going, is this right for me? Is this okay? Is this going to have what I need in it? Um, what I like to do, I hope this is recording now and actually sound recording this time, is I go to this website here called chunkbase.com forward slash apps forward slash biome hyphen finder. You can also go to Google and just search for uh, Minecraft uh, seed checker and it's almost the top one there. This website's brilliant. Um, basically, even though it's designed for the PC, it does work for um, Windows 10 edition and apparently Pocket edition. Um, there was a comment made um, about four months ago by Delvin4519. He basically stated that as long as you kept the seed number below a couple of hundred million, it would correlate with the uh, Pocket edition versions. Um, you can also use teleport to change, yes. Obviously, the weather villages that are, aren't are accurate. The main reason I use this website is for the biome checker part of it. I've um, been a lot of different tests, um, tried random worlds, tried creating a new world multiple times, different numbers. It just takes a very long time. This cuts out a lot of the problem, especially with this brilliant option here called filter biomes. I like to pick deep ocean for the chance of the monuments, Desert for the charge of temples. Ice spikes for the solid ice that doesn't melt, which is great for some of your contraptions. Plains, just because I like to start the plains. Uh, jungles for the cool pets and the cocoa beans. And if by chance, a mushroom island. So rather than just going in and creating a new world on a random seed, I'll go into Chunk Base Finder first, scroll out to roughly 2,000 blocks. So 2,000 blocks, yeah. Basically, anything outside of 2,000 blocks, you're not going to want to walk there every five minutes to get the thing you want. And anything under 2,000 blocks, you're unlikely to find that many biomes in that small uh, space. So let's go for deep ocean. Done. Plains. Done. Desert. Not dessert. Um, let's say ice spike. Ice plains spikes. Yeah. Um... Brain forwards, jungle and mushroom. Cool. So jungle. There are some subcategories, but I don't know how they work. I've not fully tested those. Mushroom island. So those are the different searches I'd like to look for. So in this seed, for example, which is way too high, that wouldn't really work on a Minecraft Windows 10 version. Uh, I'll have to go down. So let's pick a number. Um, 10, 10, 10, 10. There. Yeah. So I'll search for that biome. The number can't be too low. I tried a test earlier on the previous video I made that had no sound. And I tried number three and it didn't work at all. That's a good one look. So at 10, 10, 10, 10, we've got some deep ocean. We've got lots of desert. Got the ice plane spikes. Great. But no jungle. So let's just go. I think one of the numbers I tried was 104, 105. So that's not bad. Got jungle there. Oh, wow. Okay. Apparently this one has... A motion mile nearby. Now, by default, when you create a new world, you'll usually start at coordinates x, roughly 0, y, that's the height, 66, and z, 0. I don't think you'd start at 0, 0 on this map because it's too close to motion island, and by default, you're always pushed about a thousand blocks away from any motion island. So if I just keep going, I'll try to find some good ones. That's da -da, does it? No, no jungle. This is a great way because, oh, look, ice cream spikes. No jungle. Um, it's a lot quicker than typing in random numbers and creating the world every time and waiting to load up. And I just find this way easier. Ah, oh, see that there's some ice spikes there, but no jungle. Um, I probably won't get one doing this because I didn't last time. <laughs> I went for a few. <coughs> I haven't made a recording for a while. Um, one because I'm incredibly lazy. Um, I've been very busy. And two, my voice hasn't been great. Um, even now, it doesn't sound brilliant. That's just okay. I'm gonna put the next one. No, nothing there, I can't tell. Okay, let's go 105 again. So, if I start 10, 10, 105, 
I'm pretty darn sure I won't start at zero zero because that would be too close to Mission Island. Let's go, let's go. So create a new world, create a new world. I always put creative at first because you're just testing it, seeing if everything's there. Doesn't matter that. I will put on coordinates because it makes it a bit easier. So go 10, 10, 105. Now I very much doubt this will put me at general location zero to zero. It'll probably be a thousand off. So it says a thousand off. So this is my spawn point. And if I liked this biome, I liked the well, I'll take it off there. It shows all the biomes. If I liked the general start of the biome, um I'll be like, okay, so this is one of the ones I like. I'll create it in creative and I'll have a look around and test it. So if I go so I'll go um let's just test this teleport at P one thousand sixty six. That's the default land level. And then I don't remember the other number. What's this? One thousand oh not one thousand at all. I'm lying. Two hundred and thirty um okay most my brain's not working today. So two hundred and twenty sixty six minus two hundred and twenty. Should be a Mish Martin by. Look at that. So this is accurate. Obviously, this doesn't show me if villages, etc. are, and it wouldn't be accurate if it did show villages, because the programming for, um, sorry, the code, the yeah, the code, script code for creating villages is different from the PC version to Windows 10 version and Pocket Edition version. Um, so I wouldn't trust that. But this is very good for the biomes. In fact, it's almost always spot on. The only time I've noticed not work is when the numbers are too low, like 1 to 5, or it's too high, like 56 quadrillion. So, and that works. So, once I am at my starting point, which I know is roughly 1,060, oh, poop. Yeah. I know I start roughly around here. <clears throat> I could create a new game again, of course. I'll go, right, let's do locate. Brilliant feature. There won't be any in cities, because we're not in the end. There won't be any fortresses, because we're not in the nether. But there will be mansions, and it's 14,000 blocks away. Don't worry about that. Um, all mansions, by default, start thousands and thousands of blocks away. They're cool areas. They usually have unique monsters, unique mobs that drop um, special loot, like the Tome of Undying, I believe. And it's a very big, cool house. So it's only starting near there, but that's a nice thing to have near you, but obviously you can't be that close. Mine shafts being near is nice, so I know I'm at 1,000 here, but that's 2,000 blocks away. That's not too bad. Uh, what else we got? Locate... Ah, Monument, that's always good. To get some sponges and some cool materials. Good, that's only 1,000 blocks away. I like that. It's a good start so far. Locate Stronghold. This is important. Oh, boy, when you press Tab, it also finishes the sentence for you. You don't want to be walking 7,000 blocks to get to the end portal. Obviously, I don't want to know the exact location, because that's a bit of a cheat. But as long as I know it's within 2,000 blocks, I know that it's a good world to start in. So that's not bad. That's uh, pretty close. Locate temple. <coughs> I'm not too worried about that, but that's quite nice to find some oh, items box. Not bad. And then villages. Sound. I like villages to be more than a few hundred blocks away. If your village is too close, or a village is too close to your base, when you make a golem farm, so getting iron, if the village is too close, it might start interfering with where the golem will spawn, and it might spawn outside the golem farm. So, never build a golem farm within I'd say 200 blocks of a village, just in case. And um, that's why you also can't build golem farms within a 100 blocks of each other. Because the doors will start interfering with where it thinks the village is. So, I have like this place, for example. I like the location of all the areas. Uh, the last thing I test, the last thing I check... Um, brain? Obsidian. Is I get some obsidian. I get some flint... No, I get some flint and steel. Ba -ba 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 bang And I'll go right. If... On my spawn point, I put a obsidian portal. Well, I like what's on the other side. That'll do. Obviously, if I build a portal over there, it's not much different, because for every eight blocks in the overworld, only one block is moved in another, and vice versa. Go through here. All right, okay, so I can't into the nether very loud, sorry. Now, I know if I do locate st uh, fortress, Oh, I'm pretty close. Look, it's only 200 blocks in the direction. Right, so if I go this way... Whee! Super speed! I should see... Was that a... Yeah. This way, I should see... There it is. I like having portals fairly close to nether fortresses. Two things. One, the abundant supply of these guys to fight the wither. Or to find the wither. 
and two blaze farms. I love making blaze farms. Uh, I usually do one that's like you see in my Let's Play, if you've watched it, which is pretty much redstone free. Uh, the only thing I really use in my blaze farms is one of those carts to move around to pick up all the loot. Um, blazes are very hard to control. They can fly, float, and their spawn point is a bit odd. So, as uh, so if you look at all my Let's Plays, I show you my blaze farm. Basically, a great big hole in the floor. They fall down, and I chop them up using half slabs to sort of hide me a little bit. So, say I find this place great. I like the biome setup. Which you check from there. Double check all of it. Yep. I like how close all the items are, all the special areas are. I like how close the fortress is. That's basically it. I'll now settle on this world. I'll be like, look, this is a good world. Um, I'm not going to waste my time. I've at times I've started a new world when I first started playing Minecraft. Okay. And I've realised, oh, I've got thousands of blocks, there's no desert. Oh, I've got thousands of blocks, and there's no junk. Oh, pain in the butt. So, uh, I do this now before I create a brand new seed. Uh, most of the time. If I'm doing a skyblock challenge or something random, obviously I wouldn't need to do that. If I'm going to invest a lot of time in a world, I will do this first. Another neat trick that somehow still works, which I hope they don't fix. Because it is a bit cheaty, but... It's very useful when you're playing in survival. So I'll go, okay, um, let's go to survival mode. Settings. No, no, no. Survival mode. Okay, I want to see what's on the floor. <laughs> I'm going to use my extra vision cheat. Right there. Start on the side that you want to see from. So do that. Do that. And now stop team blocks. Destroy one block. Crouch. I should move too far. Move too fast. That's another block. And ta-da, I can see the world. Now I crouch because if you go too far in, you die. And crouching just gives you that little extra control. There you go. Now I can see there's some lava over there. Stuff over there. Let's destroy this one. And do this again. Drop. And now stuck a block. Obviously, if you try and drop the block on top of you, it'll push it away otherwise. Wow, that's a good one. Now another neat trick you can do. Now you can do this in creative, obviously, if you have gravel or sand, anything that can move. Uh, but a good bonus with the creative mode is you can cheat and create a night vision. No. Okay, that's clever. It blanks words. Bless. Uh, a night vision potion, which I can't do not creatively on. Well done. Settings. Creative. Yeah. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. This will make it way easier to see. Bam. This is great for finding spawners. One of the best things you can have near a new base is a skeleton sp uh, spawner. spawner. Because one, for experience, two, chance of getting cool armor, three, chance of getting cool bows, and four, and best of all, free bone meal. Which is great for growing your crops. Oh, and arrows, sorry, five. Arrows, tons of arrows, good. So yeah, this is how I check for, if I'm spending a lot of time in a world, going to, is I create a new seed. Um, obviously then all I do is I quit out of this game, create a new game with the same seed number but don't put it into creative, put it into survival, and I'm laughing. 10105? No cheats, none of those things, I'm crazy lap. My world. Ooh, great. And I know that, uh, you sure? Do, just Google it. I will be here, I know that my, I know there's a monument nearby, I know there's a, although I can't use any of the cheats, doesn't matter because I already know. <laughs> Roughly where everything is. Um, and I get achievements still. I mean, it's, it is a bit cheaty, I must admit. But I find it saves so much time. I could just create world after world after world and hope that I get one that's good after I spent 400 hours making my base. But, um, excuse me, I have hiccups now. Oh, this world's awesome. It's got a wolf nearby as well. Hello. Free food. Thank you so much, Wolfie. So if I had a skeleton spawn, I could give him bones, he'd join my team. My team is super friends. Right, I can't super jump. So, I hope that helps you guys, and I hope this recorded this time. Because I just recorded half an hour of this, literally 20 minutes ago, and it blocked out all the audio. Anyway, bye-bye.